Welcome back to the Hollow Sky Podcast. We are your hosts. I'm Steven. And Kyle. And we are back. It's Monday, Hollow Cult. We're here to karate kick this week in the face. Get it started off right. I like that. It's going to be a good time. Kyle's been diving into I Am Not entirely sure some Just, weird stuff some weird stuff uh speaking of weird stuff me and kyle just officially heard a sasquatch outside of my house hell yeah weird shit it was weird we're gonna talk about it definitely a little bit. weird uh we go out between episodes so kyle's kyle can smoke we went out there it's about 10 o'clock central time at night and we start hearing this weird bellowing, right? Like it doesn't sound like a cow. Doesn't sound like really anything that's supposed to hear in Illinois. Uh, I tried to record it on my phone, didn't get a very good recording of it. But regardless, uh, there's no cows out there. The sound immediately stops probably after we were out there. What? I don't know. Two minutes. Yeah, let's say a couple minutes at the most. And um, not long after that. So I think, hey, that's going to be a good idea. Let me try to do a squatch call, which was horrendous, by the way. Probably scared it off. And then I'm like, oh, or I could whistle at it. So whistle at the forest in the evening, in the nighttime. Good idea. Which is always highly suggested. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Then, as we're sitting there, the dog kind of across the, like, my house is here, cemetery, and then the neighbor's house is across the cemetery. Their dog starts freaking out. Starts making these weird noises, like, sounds like a dog with bronchitis trying yeah. to bark. So I'm like, well, something's got that dog stirred up. And then me and Kyle hear this. <laughs> it's it's like a, a bipedal footfall out across the cornfield. It's loud. Like it's we're probably loud. 100, 150 yards away, and you just hear it crunching. And it's not running, but it's a pretty good pace. Boom, like crunch, 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 crunch out across this field. And we stand there, and we listen to it for probably a minute, making its way across this field. Getting quieter, getting quieter, getting quieter. And uh, yeah, then we walk out into the cemetery, look for it, can't find it, come back in. Now we're recording. But yeah. Uh, my professional opinion, definitely Squatch. Obviously. I mean, there's re- there's no other real no. solution to it. So. No, 100% Squatch. Yeah. So we, which, I mean, there have been reports and accounts from Pier Marquette, which is 10, 10 minutes away. Uh, there have been accounts and reports of actual BFRO reports from Otterville, which is also probably, what, 15 minutes away? Yeah. So, the area is Squatchy. That's where uh, Ghost Hunter Dave had his report down that way, down toward Rose Rosedale. Almost said Roswell. Wow, Rosedale. A little off. <laughs> uh, the BFRO did a big, uh, or Finding Bigfoot did a big town hall meeting right there at Pier Marquette. We've got tracks sent to us from Pier Marquette, uh, not far from where my parents have the weird Squatchy stuff going on. So. It's probably trying to make its way here to do an interview, if I had to guess. I hope so. But, I mean, logically, yeah, that's kind of the way your brain has to go. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why else to be out there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So, Squatch, if you're listening, check us out on all our social medias, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, X, Reddit, Discord, whatever. Search up the Hollow Sky Podcast. We have a specific spot in the Hollow Cult for the Sasquatch whenever he decides to use... uh, Modern media and get on the socials. We we're waiting, bud. We're here for it. Waiting. If Sasquatch has a paranormal encounter with a human that he would like to call into the show, Kyle's got the deets that he's gonna need to write down on his Sasquatch memo pad. Well, you can carve your experience out. <laughs> And for that, you would have to send it over to the P.O. Box, which is P.O. Box 145, Field, Illinois, 62031. You can also, I guess, take a picture of your carving and then shoot it over to the email, which is going to be hollowskypodcast at gmail.com. 
And then we will decipher it and try to explain it on the show. <laughs> or you can also uh, look in the show notes for that that information as well. And and do your thing. I mean, if you if you have a cellular cellular device, you can call us, which is going to be 618-556-0837. Or on alternating Saturdays, we're always here. If you just want to stand out across yeah. the graveyard in the cornfield and just yell squatch sounds at us, we'll we'll write that off as an encounter. Yeah, we'll make we'll make that work. We can we can work with that. So I know we're joking about it, but it was legitimately it was strange. Weird. We've been doing it this for goosebumps. five years, and we've never had that happen to us. So it it gave me goosebumps listening to that thing walk out across the field. Uh, might go over there and poke my head around, look for tracks. Probably won't. Not my field. Don't want to get uh, trespassing charges and stuff in the daylight. You know how it is. Anyway, so I know what you're thinking now after that spiel. You're thinking, man, what can I do to support these two avid Squatchers, what can I do? Well, first and foremost, you can just share the show word of mouth. Get the Hollow Cult out there. Help us. Help people listen to us. You can also go to our uh, website, hollowskypodcast.com, and go to the store and check that out. We got all kinds of goodies over there. Shirts, stickers, beanies, cool stuff. We got a Patreon if you like extra content. If you're so in love with our show that you're like, you know what, I need more. It's an addiction. I really would like to listen to these guys talk more than I already do. Uh, you can check that out. Tons of tears over there. Go and do that. Uh, you can leave us a five star rating and review, which I don't have ready right now because I was talking about Sasquatch. You know how that goes, which I will pull up here. Talk amongst yourselves. Our five star rating of the day, of this day, comes to us from our friend Mandy Soldo. Mandy says, Five stars, love it. Thank you for getting me through my work day. Well, Mandy, thank you for taking the time to leave us a five star rating and review. Uh, we appreciate it very much. It helps push the show. Uh, out on more ears when you give us a five star. It helps in the Apple algorithm, which is already screwed up, but we appreciate it. And we're glad we can help you get through the grind. We all know how terrible that is. Yeah. If you're looking for a listener experience, we are dropping them on Thursdays. We got a couple bangers put out here recently. You can check them out Thursday, kind of a last ditch effort to get you through the work week. On that note, Get weird with us, Kyle. We are going to get weird. This is kind of another uh, PSA-type environment. We had a uh, not-so-cool one on the... I don't know which one. It would be a night shift, so check that out. Um, But, yeah, I started looking into alien-human hybrids. And more so from the perspective of the women involved in these encounters. Hmm. It's not very cool. Um, There's some pretty shitty things that happen. So with that being said, I guess we're just going to kind of dive right into it and see, see what type of conversation we can draw up. Uh, The first encounter that I was able to find is from Elizabeth Claver. She was a South of African woman with a very bizarre story. Outside of her experiences, however, she was an extremely normal person. She loved music, aviation, meteorology, and during World War II, she was she actually had served in the Royal Air Force. So one would think in order to accomplish this goal, you would have to be a sane and be a very committed person. However, she has a truly bizarre encounter in 1954. She claims that she was abducted by aliens. 
And this is insane, but this alien that abducted her was actually an astrophysicist named Akon. Not not the rapper. The pop star. Pop star, rap, whatever you want to call it. Hmm. Because this Akon was from Metton. M-E-T-O-N. Now, Metton is a planet apparently near or of Proxima Centauri. Was Akon a rapper on Metton? Maybe. It's possible. Anything's possible. Copy. But anyways... Apparently, Akon, he was pretty slick with it because <laughs> Elizabeth, Elizabeth, no, she just, she fell in love with him. And through that love, the old fashioned way, they, they end up having a kid. And it was actually a son. Elizabeth ended up painting a portrait of Akon who looked more or less human or, or possibly like the, the Nordic aliens that you'll hear about once in a while. He probably like swooned her with the Proxima Centauri version of Smack That. I'm uh, guaranteed. Yeah. Guaranteed. Um after four months though of living on his planet, she was forced to return home. It wasn't because he was done with her or anything like that. They were actually they were in love with each other. But apparently she began developing heart problems from the magnetics of the new planet. So in order to save her life, they decided it would be best to send her back to Earth. Akon and the others of this planet told Elizabeth that they were from Venus before. But what had happened was Venus started to move too close to the sun, which then ended up killing all life. They also informed her that they had bases on the earth, on the moon and Mars on the reg. They'll visit them because they feel responsible for the fate of earth and the humans. Apparently they want to help us become more developed Oddly enough, she ended up writing a book about her experience called Beyond the Light Barrier. In this book, she tried to convey a message of peace, love, and care about the environment. Sounds kind of weird, but she's not the only one who claims to have been having children with aliens. And she does paint a light that... Akon and his entire race is is empathetic toward humans. Yes. You know, they want to look out for the planet. They don't want the same fate to kind of happen to us that happened to them. Uh, he was in love with her enough that he sacrificed essentially his time with her to send her back to Earth so she can survive. I did look up, and it does say that electric and magnetic field, field exposure can affect the heart rate and heart rate variability. So, so maybe maybe he wasn't, maybe he didn't get just done with her and come up with a clever lie. Yeah. There's actually some truth behind that, so Elizabeth can, can rest well. <coughs> no, and that Akon was really looking out. Yeah. Good on, good on him. It's, it's, I don't know, like a... It's just, it's super, but I guess it wouldn't be that hard to essentially fall for us from a different planet. No, how would you, you know? I mean. Because we picture extraterrestrials far different than the description of this person here. Yeah, he could have swooped in and, uh, you know, sweet talked her. And then after she fell in love with him, he'd be like, oh yeah, so the... A red flag you missed is that I'm not from. Yeah, I'm not from around here. Yeah, oh, 
BRB, <laughs> and then he completely disappears from the planet legitimately. What was it? I'll have to find the book again. I'd be interested in reading if she goes into the details of like how Beyond she got, the Light Barrier. Beyond the Light Barrier. I wonder if she goes into detail about how like she got back and forth. I don't know. That's that a good would question. be interesting to read. It's a good question. And yeah, I mean, by the sounds of it, she she promotes what I could only assume would be his message, you know, of caring for the planet. And, and but I, I've also heard theories that eventually um, Earth will share the same fate as Venus, that it, it's going to start moving too close to the sun, which will exterminate all life. Yeah. Yeah. And so on and so forth. Like it, it'll almost be a never ending chain, I guess, essentially until our solar system is, burnt to a crisp yeah i read that that I, it's funny that you bring that up because i'm going off on a tangent here so don't yell at me listeners but i read that that is the only one of it might be the only way to fully eradicate every living species on earth is when it gets pulled into the sun to the point to where it burns off bacteria it burns off viruses it burns off everything so we'll be 100 percent done yeah, because I was listening to, um, what is it? Oh, man, I can't remember. I'll think of it here in a little bit. Bill and I, the science guy? No, like why we haven't found uh, other alien life. And the theory is that the sun burnt them all? No. Uh, let me find it. I can't find it. But it's like, what is it called? Um, damn, my brain just does not work very good. As to why we haven't discovered other life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, like, like it should be teeming, the entire planet should be, or the entire solar system, galaxy, whatever, should be teeming with life. And the reason behind it, they said, look at how many times... Life, especially on our planet, is so resilient. Look at how many times there have been mass, mass extinctions. Asteroids hitting, wiping out 99% of all life, but life still bounces back, still bounces back. They said if, if we're an example, if we, if we set the example for life across the entire galaxy, then there should be, it should be teeming with life because it's so hard to kill life off. They said initially it would be the planet moving so close to the sun that it just turns to ash would be one well, of the ways. Uh, see, I would argue that there's two two solid ways to crush life. Heat, you know, being pulled in the sun, and then the opposite of that, deep freeze. Whereas some of these... Uh, bacteria or whatever can c could bounce back if they were to be dethawed. But if if it's never to be dethawed, then essentially it's life is non-existent. Stay, stay frozen forever. Yeah, yeah. But I, it was just weird that we we went off on that tangent after I had just listened to it. But Fermi paradox—that's what it is. Gotcha. <clears throat> anyway, my bad. Going back to going back, back to this uh <laughs> this this one's not so cool. The first one there was just basically like a Jerry Springer episode. This one however not cool. This took place in Australia. There was a 24-year-old woman named Meg Megan Liker. Um she says that for 4 years aliens had been using her to give birth. Math seems a little bit off if this is the, the story I'm thinking of. But anyways, apparently she gave birth to as many as 48 children. In 2001, Megan married and wanted to have children of her own, but couldn't get pregnant. She actually couldn't have children due to an incomprehensible old age and the deterioration of of her internal re re reproductive organs. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that in 2001, at I'm assuming the age of 24, 
she had the uterus of a 60-year-old woman. Hmm. Now, according to doctors, she had given birth many, many, many times. This news would, I mean, obviously shocked Megan. She's like, this is impossible because I've never oh, that's, had a child. That's weird. In a, in a weird turn of events, and this is very peculiar to me, one of the physicians actually suggests hypnosis to clarify some of the strange circumstances surrounding her past. Hmm. Weird, right? <clears throat> so through hypnosis, her story goes as follows. She was walking along the, the alley of the city park when she noticed a UFO ho- hovering over her. Naturally, just like anyone, you would be absolutely terrified. The UFO tried to get closer, which prompted her to take off running as quickly as she could. And all of a sudden, she was stopped by the iconic beam of light that sucks her right up into the craft. She woke up in complete darkness and silence. Megan screamed for help, but no one responded she started to explore this area that she was in. She figured out she was in this small room um, with touch. She could tell that the small room had smooth walls and floors. She expressed how time went away quickly in that place and almost drove her to insanity, which oddly in her case, it seems like a breaking tactic something that could break her completely or put her in the mindset of acceptance as to what's happening to her. Anyways, suddenly a bright light flashes and Megan sees silhouettes, these small creatures that begin to approach her and order her to get up. She said that these, these beings were only like height wise. They were only up to about her shoulders She describes them as having large heads, slender arms and legs, also having huge black eyes. She was quickly taken from the small room that she was in to a, it it essentially looks like a surgery room. The alien ends up carrying out some type of examination. After this, they put her in a cell. This cell has transparent walls and floors and ceilings. So basically like a cube, all made of glass. Fucked up thing is, is as she begins to look around and explore her surroundings through these these glass walls, she notices that she's not alone. There's essentially rows and rows of cubes with women in them. Now there was a woman who was right next to her and these two, they can't, they can't hear each other. So it's like soundproof rooms, but they able to, they kind of come up with this, this makeshift sign language to communicate with each other. Her name, neighbor's name was Kelly. Be it. She was 25 years old at the time. Kelly told Megan, they need us to have children. Two weeks later, Megan's belly begins to grow. Within a few months, she gives birth to her first child. During the birth, several entities were there. And after the child was born, he was immediately taken away. But Megan was able to catch a glimpse and was, unfortunately instantly disgusted by the baby. The baby looked relatively normal. However, it had their large eyes. That's terrifying. Yeah. After a short time, the medical examination in the operating room was completed again. Shortly after this, another pregnancy occurred. It would only take about four months to have these children. Megan claimed she was kept at the lunar base 
which had pyramid-like structures on it. She claims she went through this for at least four years, amassing 48 babies before she finally went sterile. Like I said, if you do the math on that, it doesn't necessarily line up, right? Hold on. So because four, in four years, it would you would need to pump out twelve. How many did she say she had? She said a baby would take four months. Okay, and how many? She says she has forty-eight within four years. Forty-eight. It's 12 a month or 12 a year. You'd have to do 12 unless a year. she had multiple births, twins or triplets. That's yeah, that's possible. And that's if they started when she thinks they started. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's there's a lot of variables there that could be kind of mixed around. The story gets a little weirder, though. So it's kind of fucked up. They basically use her until she becomes sterile, and then they dump her. Um, In a not surprising turn of events, after she was sterile, or like I said, she, she ends up getting returned to Earth and has her memory wiped. But this is where it's strange. Apparently, she served in the Army... Under a four-year contract, the Australian Ministry of Defense denies they've ever had her in their employment. Weird. Then, oh wait, that's the that's the end of that one. But how strange is it in regards to Sir No Face? What's going on down there? Because you have that whole thing where the alien was caught on film in a military base. Yes. And the whole operation was funded by the the, the government down there. Yeah, they paid to have people come in and investigate. Yeah. And then you have her with a four-year contract with the military that they now deny... And yet she claims she did four years, at least four years, on a lunar base pumping out alien kids. Dude, that's... Fucking weird. The... The connotations of them just using women as, like, some weird just, like, Baby mill is disgusting. Yeah, yeah, and 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 like you like you pointed out. I mean, that's assuming that wherever she was, whether it was our moon or somewhere else, uh, time functions the same there. Because essentially, she could have done a twenty and back. Yeah. To a degree, anyways, because her uterus was still jacked. Yeah, that's I didn't even think of that. It's what what she considered as four years. And yeah, we know, we know time distorts via space travel. Right. So what she felt was four years could have been could have been who eight knows. years. Um, I'm reading through some different uh things here, and. Remember last year when that big fifteen hundred pages? Yeah, that's leaked. You getting into that? Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't actually dig through it, but yeah, I bring yeah. it up because they okay. they do report right. some in there. I didn't find it either, but I just all right. I'll let you. I wasn't trying to cut your grass. No, it's good. It's good. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> moving on from here, though, believe it or not, <clears throat> gets a little. It's fucking bizarre. It's bizarre. It's not as dark. But it's bizarre. Yeah, that one was not good. Mm-mm, no, that is just the idea. Fucking of, terrifying. It is. It is. It's. It's like a puppy mill. It's like. Yes. A, it's like a, a human mill. Yep, and I've I've seen other women who have claimed that 
um, ETs will come and steal their eggs. I've heard of that too. You know, and and with this, because there there are just as many reports out there where men are being manipulated in the same way to a degree. Um, but I was trying to solely focus on just the women this go. But you, this is this story is just fucking insane. You have an entire group of women within the United States who claim that they have had sexual encounters with aliens and quote, it's the best sex they've ever had. <laughs> Sorry, human fellas. Yeah. Um, You've been replaced. Yeah, they they claim that the the women of the planet are selling themselves short or something like that. Like, it was a very peculiar way to word it. Like, it was their choice to not be going out and having hot girl summer or hot girl space, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> but there was a, a Bridget Nielsen from Sedona, Arizona, and it says Allen verse, but I, I wonder if that was a typo from Los Angeles. We'll just say Miss Verse. Um, but a, they apparently they are actually members of the hybrid baby community. This community believes that their children live on giant alien spaceships. Between the two women, they apparently have 13 children through both artificial insemination and real sexual encounters. Members of the group believe they have been harvesting their DNA to create children to combine the best of both human and alien. Nielsen, who is 27 years old, says that the thousands of women across the world are missing out on the best sex of their life. The mothers will draw what their children look like, most displaying reptilian features with black eyes. Verse, a 23-year-old game designer, said she was sitting in a classroom with other humans when a green reptilian creature was sitting next to her, and she was all of a sudden super sexually turned on. So as one would imagine, her and the reptilian overlord began having sex in front of the entire class while they all watched. Oh. Yeah. Nielsen speaks highly of the situation <laughs> she's been placed in, however. She comments that she lost one of her children to, quote-unquote, devastating circumstances when it didn't perform properly, or when it didn't form properly. She also makes the claim that most women have hybrid baby babies and there are signs to look for as well. If you have reoccurring dreams about doctor's offices or classrooms, missing time, or false pregnancies, these may mean you've had relations with aliens. The women within this community actually have plans to create their own community away from cities, a place where their children can come and visit and be themselves. Um, I'm sorry, uh, but if you have to look for symptoms of having sex with aliens, I don't know that I'd call that sex. There's a whole nother word <laughs> that one would use for that situation. And I don't think it's an okay word to say, apparently, for some fucking reason. But, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of like the, the, the human equivalent of putting certain narcotics in a drink and going from there. Yeah. That's yeah. almost exactly what that is. That's... <laughs> and then it just, it sounds like a real life cult that they're going to build their own compound somewhere out in the fucking desert. Yeah. It's almost to hang out. This, that whole group is its almost as if they're being so brainwashed, for lack of a better term, uh, into, like, creating this safe community for these... They're human hybrids. Yeah. yeah. They're just, like, 
proxies out here doing all the work for these aliens. It's weird, man. It's fucking bizarre. It's 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 bizarre that there's more than one of them. Yeah. There's a whole community. Yeah. You know, so I mean as crazy as it sounds, you almost have to take it semi serious that there's a whole community of people that are like, hey, this is happening. Right? I mean, because we do we do the same thing with Bigfoot encounters, ghost encounters, all of it. It's just that most of what we hear aren't as out there. Like, I don't know. I don't want to say out there, but they're as graphic as this particular set of circumstances here. Um, It's strange, though. It's strange. It's almost, almost like they're building their own little army. Yeah, like what they want to do. I'm curious as to like, like the second guy we talked about who had all the pregnancies. If they kept those hybrids on their planet, I think so. Or if they came back here, I don't know. I don't know. We'll touch on that in a little bit. Um, I found a couple other, they're surprisingly rather difficult to find these stories, but I found a few short ones. Uh, There was a KFC employee from Detroit, a Loretta Wolf. She was declared as sterile by doctors. As she's accepting that fact that she'll never have kids again, she's apparently abducted by a group of humanoids and taken onto a spaceship. She went through a series of creepy medical activities, which included a huge syringe being injected into her belly. She said that the pain was so intense that it ended up making her pass out. When she finally comes to, she was near her car, which was roughly four hours later. A few weeks later, she had a strange feeling in her body and took the pregnancy test, which was positive. Apparently, according to her, she had a alien human hybrid in her womb. But it's anybody's guess if that's exactly what that was. Now, I mean, if if this is all real, she remembers being taken onto the spaceship, going through these medical activities, the syringe. I wonder if any of these... Um alien hybrid babies have ever had DNA tests ran like specific DNA tests ran on them to see probably if I bet there is the other, you know, they're going to have, they're going to have human DNA on the mom's side. What are they going to have on the father's side? Right. Well, this next woman, uh, her name was Giovanna. She claimed she had been abducted and, and, impregnated multiple times by aliens who always remove the fetus around two months in 2010. She went for an abortion and the fetus was taken out of her body and had definite reptilian characteristics like web feet and its face resembled that of a tadpole. Mm. Um, another rather graphic strange one was with a woman who was visited one night by an entity. This thing ends up paralyzing her in front of her husband and made her remove all of her clothes and have relations with it. Apparently when this thing climaxed, she felt as she describes as oily seeds (laughs) filling her up. The being told her <laughs> this is X X rated. It's fucked. Hollow dude. sky after dark. It's <laughs> fucked up, man. The being told her that she would have a boy in the next three months, and apparently she ends up having a boy in the next three months. Got some deviant alien behavior, bro. Here. I mean, if this shit's real, I, I don't know, man. I don't, it's gross. Uh, you have a. Niera Teresa Isley, who I may look 
a little bit more into because it seems like her story is is possibly a bigger part of a bigger story but apparently she was a radar trafficking trafficking officer she claims she was snatched up by a humanoid with a tail and taken to a secret base on the moon there she basically was forced to have relations with aliens while on this moon base. So there's another one that references a base on the moon that does this type of, of shit. Um, and all of it sounds fucking crazy. Every bit of it sounds insane. However, there's legitimately a Pentagon file like Steve was bringing up earlier that gets le- it gets a, a FOIA act against it, and they release some of it. I started, I tried reading through it. I cannot find the actual, like, description of encounters, but it does reference pregnancies surrounding alien abductions. <laughs> it's not so fucking... It's fucking crazy. There's a... <clears throat> the, uh, the article is... And like I said, you can read through it. It kind of gives a breakdown of, of things that happened or happen in abductions. I'm assuming what ends up transpiring here is they come in contact with people who've been abducted, and then they they interrogate them, probably run tests on them, and they compile a list. Now, you get the list. You get the list of what is being reported in these alien abductions. So the the article is labeled as anomalous acute and subacute field effects on human and biological tissues. Basically this is what happens when you come in contact with UFOs and extraterrestrials. Now, according to this article, there were at bare minimum five people during their study or whatever you want to call it that end up reporting sexual encounters with extraterrestrials. But it does reference some pregnancies as well. That's so, like, what? It's out, it's out of this fucking world, man. Unaccounted for pregnancy. It's out of this fucking world. It's crazy, right? But then you you go digging around because you you you'd ask yourself, okay, well, why why are you making hybrids? Why, bro? There are legit scientists who have stepped forward trying to fill that mantle, saying they figured it out. And the theories are just as fucking crazy as the claims. You have people that are convinced they are creating a alien humid human race to overthrow the planet and and put it into submission. You have other scientists who have come forward and said no no they're they're doing this and this doesn't even fucking make sense but they're doing this to help us fight climate change bro what swear i'm not kidding you i just read an article about how that's why they're creating alien human hybrids is because they're going to help us fight climate change how that's what i'm saying that doesn't make sense (laughs) <laughs> well yeah and there was <clears throat> there was another one <clears throat> that came forward another scientist who's like I gotta figure it out boys they are actually creating alien human hybrids to help uh what would you call that enlighten us so I'm assuming what his claim is is that Through all the years, through years, they've been creating alien-human hybrids. Now, we've all heard it. We've all heard, and just 
utterly dismiss what you know about this phrase, just push it over to the side. But we've all heard the phrase, the great awakening. All these people waking up to the bullshit, right? Well, supposedly, everyone who is like sub, like subconsciously experiencing <clears throat> this, this awakening effect, this coming to terms that the world is not what it is, et cetera, et cetera, you are probably an alien human hybrid. Oh. Because the whole purpose of the, the hybrid situation was to create, like, basically evolve us beyond where we're at. Hmm. So there's that theory. There's other theories about the, how they need, they need us to save their race because they're whatever the fuck went on. <laughs> they, they need Venus burn up, whatever it is. So there's a <clears throat> God dang. So there's a million and one theories as to why they would be doing this, which I think grossly overlooks the encounters of people who go through it. Because all, all of them right there, minus the plot to enslave humanity, all of them are kind of like justifying the means to the end. Yeah. Which is fucked. It makes, <clears throat> it makes me think about... That Max Spears interview where he said 99% of what we think of alien abductions are done by world governments. Right. They're not alien at all. Which is still it, equally as fucked. Almost more fucked. At least aliens have an excuse that they're not human. They could look at us as like some other just sub lower species that they're just doing experiments on. Humans, you expect better out of humans. Yeah. It's like you take away the the human element and it, it doesn't give them a pass to do this nefarious shit. Right. But it, it almost makes it less terrible, I guess, than a person doing it to another person. People, people know how people suffer. People know. People would justify it all the same, yeah, though. Yeah, hundred percent. They would be like, "Oh no, we're, we got to do this for climate change. This is why we well, have and, to do this." And humans, humans <clears throat> treat each other infinitely worse than than this yeah. anyway. Oh yeah. Just because they're they're pieces of shit, but it's almost like if it were the governments, they're, they're working on these programs, these super soldier programs, these, uh, I could hundred percent genetic, that. genetic modification programs, these DNA splicing programs. Well, and you, you need test subjects for that. Exactly. And exactly. not many people are going to willingly sign up to, to get run in a mill where it's going to dry your uterus up by the time you're 21. Yeah. yeah. And what better way, what better way to get a free pass than instill these memories on these victims? Which that, we know can be done. Yeah. It can, like, that's the sketchy part about hypnosis is that if you're not doing it with the person who knows what the fuck they're doing, <clears throat> they can plant these memories and they can suggest things and, and plant it into your, into your subconscious yep. or whatever you want to call it. Yep. What better way then choose an enemy that can't be proven. Yeah. An enemy that doesn't leave any evidence. An enemy that essentially can't be fought back against, can't be defended against, because we don't have any proof that it exists. And and furthermore, like, for the women that experience this, imagine how fucking soul-crushing it is to think that... F aliens are responsible for essentially the R word to me repeatedly to create life out of me without my consent. Like, uh, imagine the utter helplessness these people feel. Oh, yeah, it's like that's all, like. 
it's it would be bad enough for a human and a human but the the fact that it's in now whether w- w- true or not whether it's implanted or it's 100% true imagine how much more devastating it cuz you, you know at the end of the day there's legitimately no stopping that no like it's 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 no it's but fucking there's so I many i can't i can't even i can't even begin to imagine what that would be like no It'd be, it's it'd fucking be horrible. horrible. It'd be horrible. You know, you... Yeah, I don't even... I, I, I as a man, cannot even begin to fathom. No. Because I do not know, and will not ever know, the experience of having life grow inside of me. Be it alien, be it right. human. You know, there's still some ingrained emotional attachment there. Yeah, it's supposed to be a special thing, uh, you know the whole, all of it. And it, I don't know, man. Like it's just a. Uh, and then you hear you've we've heard we've heard stories, and you know that's fucking included. You've heard the stories where the the governments have made deals. Yeah. With outside ET races and yeah. stuff. The more I don't know, man. It almost feels like all of that is a narrative to a narrative being pushed to to weave this story that uh extraterrestrials are extraterrestrials are to blame for all of this. I could I could see it going both ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't put it past them. I could easily see a more advanced race coming in, experimenting, modifying G- DNA, modifying um genomes maybe start their own fucking petri dish somewhere, yeah. you know. Or Let's say it's it's some super advanced civilization that all they need all they need are some worker bees all they need are some drones. Oh, dude, that sucks. Yeah, so I they think come about in, that. They come in. They're like, "Hey, we got this. We got these little hairless apes down here." Well, shit. Uh, the actual humans can't survive on our planet because the magnetics are different. Yeah. So yeah. we got to create yeah. hybrids that'll be able to to stand the the change. Yep. We've worked we've worked all of our lower class out here on uh Akon's planet to the bone. <laughs> so we need to get some some, some hybrids out here, which is that sucks. The the emotional damage would be so terrible. Like I've seen um seen interviews on Unsolved Mysteries and stuff of women who've came forward saying that they had been impregnated by these aliens and that the children are taken from them and they're still at such a loss in, you know, mothering that baby that they never get to experience again. They, I've read some that they'll come back sometimes and like bring the children to see the mother like 10 years down the road or something like in an abduction scenario like the ufo's will come back it she'll the mother will recount all of the like the beings coming out and then there'll be like say two beings that she sees and she has an immediate connection with like she knows that these are her children right it's <laughs> either I way i couldn't imagine having that rain in my head because my head can be a horrible horrible place anyways but the amount of distraught and just emptiness that gets left with you from something like that uh devastating absolutely devastating yeah it's it's honestly i hope every one of these stories is fucking fake yeah I don't I don't want them to be real at all. And if you if you go the if you look back like I know we we made pretty pretty lightheartedness of the episode we released last week the entities episode. But if you look at some of the encounters there the consequences of them could have been disastrous. Cuz you have the two the two girls that saw the uh, yeah. the stump creatures, you know. Yep. Uh, the the robot sunflowers, the yeah. little the young girl focusing on the girl, yeah, 
And she said when she saw the craft, it was like she was in some sort of hypnosis. Like, yeah. it's I don't know, man, dude. It's it's gross. It, it absolutely is, and it's just I don't know, like. I don't know. All that stuff is kind of like sacred in its own way. And the fact that some other race or whatever the fuck you want to call them is out there just more or less defiling it. Like yeah. something that's sacred to us, like having children. And they're just kind of making a mockery of it. Just kind of fucking sucks. Yeah. It's like, uh, it's, it's. It's like playing God, essentially. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. And I don't know. I don't. Stark. I don't even know which is worse. If it were, if it is all a big ploy uh, that the world governments are doing this and trying to push off the narrative that it's being done off world, or if it is another species off world that's doing it. Yeah, they're both pretty bad. Pricks. That's bad. Either way, no bueno. It's stupid. No. I don't know, but as hard as it is to hear and talk about, in the world of it, you you got to know what's out there. I mean, if it's really out there. Yeah, I mean, regardless, you have either people experiencing it or people that think they're experiencing it. And on on both hands, it's it's it takes yeah, an emotional toll. Absolutely, on those that are having to deal with it. I mean, and some of the women, like I've I've watched videos of them, they seem extremely rational. Like they do not seem crazy. Yeah, it's it's no different than like you and me telling a story about what happened to us. They sound just as sane as what we would sound for the most part. Yeah, and I mean, if there, there's, there's medical evidence. If that story about the gal with the uh, destroyed uterus from having oh, so many pregnancies, been, uh, we had a text come through about a woman who had, um, it looked like surgical scarring on her uterus and stuff, because she, I think she was saying that they were stealing her eggs. That's so fucked up. So there's been reports, more than one report of of these anomalous, at least anomalous situation. Like I don't understand why there's so much scarring down there. Yeah. You know, outside of you having surgeries or something like that going on, like this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, which there would be evidence of. Exactly. It'd be she, paper trail. Well, that and she had no outside scars anywhere that would in, in you know insist that uh, she had a surgery at some point. Yeah. That's, uh, it's, it's, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, um, yeah. It's gross. Yep. Well, that's all I have for now. Yeah. I don't even know how to end it. <laughs> you know, I always end it with something lighthearted, but I don't feel like it's a very lighthearted subject at this point. So, no, it's not. Uh, yeah. Check us out at also all of our social medias. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Discord, Reddit. Uh, come and hang out with us. Let us know what you think. Um, if, and I hope there is not, but if, if anyone has, has experienced anything like this that would like to reach out and talk about, come forward with their story, we, uh, we will give you this platform if you would like. To, to put it out there what you've experienced um, but on that note Hollow Cult stay safe stay weird and um, world governments if you're listening stop just stop doing this shit aliens too